What's up guys, Eugene Sayer here. Today we're back again and this video we're going to be playing some Camille in the jungle. So in the latest jungle patch, a lot of junglers got nerfed that were at the top of the meta such as Jin Zhao, Kha'Zix, Master Yi. So I think a lot of those junglers really outshadowed Camille in the last patch, but now that those junglers got nerfed, I do think that Camille is probably one of the best junglers again and possibly even maybe the best jungler. So we're going to start off with a normal clear, starting off at the red buff. But this video is actually going to be split up into two matches. The first match is going to focus a lot on objectives, and especially that first dragon. And then the second video, the main topic of the second video, is going to be ganking and how to increase the success of your ganking. And honestly, I think the second video is probably more helpful to a lot of new players. But I want to put this first video, or this first match first, because I think what I'm going to talk about in this video, a lot of people don't know, and it's less known than what's probably known in the second video, but overall, the fundamentals from the second video are probably more important, but I just think this is really cool what happens in this video that a lot of people really don't pay attention to. But to start off with, I'm looking at my lanes, and I'm trying to see which lane has the priority, which lane is going to have the advantage. That way, if a fight breaks out of the scuttle, then I'll be able to get the rotate first. Because over here, looking at these matchups, if you look at this top side right now, if a fight breaks out at this top scuttle over here, it's clear that our Renekton will be able to rotate first, and they have the health advantage, they have the positioning advantage, so that's going to be nice. Compared to the bot side, they actually got the kill there, so that's even better. Compared to the bot side, we have a bit of a weaker bot duo with a Leona Vayne that could be a bit weaker in an early game scuttle fight, so that's why I decided to play for this top scuttle instead, where I have the advantage with the Renekton. So I'm able to take this here and... Um, I'm telling you, it's actually really tricky to land your third ability onto the scuttle because the scuttle actually pads away from you. So if you look at the scuttle right now, it's running exactly away from where I'm approaching it from. So you can actually use that to dictate where you want the scuttle to go, which lane you want to push it towards, or where you want to go to next, if you didn't know. But now, I'm taking this, and over here I see the Kha'Zix is starting to head up on the riverside. So I'm being a bit cautious of that. Honestly, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to power farm to level 5. That's what you need to do with Camille. If you don't see a good gank, you need to be trying to farm up to level 5. So that's what I'm doing right now because with your ult, you can almost guarantee a kill. See so over here now, they're looking for an invade with the Kha'Zix. I am, we don't have any vision inside of our jungle, so being a bit cautious. The Kha'Zix does get that Gromp. He's going to jump over this wall most likely, which is what I'm looking for. I don't have my third ability, so I can't hookshot onto him, but we force out the flash. And now we're able to force out both flashes. And I really thought about that. I really thought about that. But I decided not to. I did not need to get stunned by Pantheon underneath her. That'd be a huge mistake. But I'm running Sweeper this match. And when you do use your Sweeper, you want to try and check multiple places where there's going to be cams. So as you can see, I checked two bushes up top and I checked this bush over here. There's no warding. So now I'm over here. I'm looking for a gank onto this auction. The auction gets a good escape. But that's what I'm talking about. Fighting around the lanes where you have priority. If you didn't notice, in that top set, I have the priority with the Renekton versus the Pantheon just because my Renekton is hard winning that lane. And he has a good positioning advantage. He has the wave advantage. So with the fight breaking out over there, I have the advantage. Notice how the Renekton was able to rotate onto the enemy Kha'Zix, but the Pantheon really wasn't able to. And that's why I love playing around lanes that I have priority around. And over here, now this Kha'Zix, he's looking for the invade here. And I'm being super cautious. And what's the reason for that? Kha'Zix has his isolated damage on me right now. I have no allies near me meaning all of his damage is going to be isolated with this perk, meaning his damage is going to pretty much be doubled against me right now. So that's why I was playing it super safe, and I didn't go right onto him. Sally so gets a good gank off on our bot lane. Now I'm looking for a counter gank here. I'm able to get onto this Kha'Zix, thankfully able to pick up that kill. Not able to get the Lulu, but it's fine. That Luxel totally just chunked through that person's health bar. But actually, I want to talk about a good reason why I did not gank this bot side at level 5, and I'm really considering something huge. It's the Lulu ult. Okay, because once you get your Camille ult, you really want to be looking for a gank. You want to be looking where you can get a kill. And you pretty much want to force something with your ult. And ganking that bot side, even if I do land my ult on somebody like... Who's there, I think their ADC is Varus. They're just going to get the Lulu ult, which is going to knock me up and give them so much health. Meaning I won't be able to get that kill. So that's why I didn't just rotate to the bot side and use my ult there. Instead, I kind of just held it on for a bit and i would have looked for a gank elsewhere but over here notice how that lux got isolated so they got completely bursted down but thankfully that lux got a super good combo onto that kazix and that kazix just got completely deleted in half a second but now i'm keeping an eye on what's going on around here the varus is around so is the auction so i decided to just check these areas for warding checked all three of these bushes here that's really key to check multiple bushes if you are going to run the sweeper 
And now what am I doing? I'm just clearing my jungle and I was looking at the top side and the reason for that is I was thinking do I want to go for a cross map play do I want to try and look for a kill on the top side but I decide not to and it's for one specific reason it's because I don't have my ult off cooldown without my ult it really decreases the chance that I'll be able to kill a pantheon because a pantheon shield that deflects damage plus if they have flash up I won't be able to kill them without my ult there so that's why I decided to just hang around the dragon more instead but now I got my ult off cooldown they're looking to force something at the herald and now I'm able to turn onto this. They're all super low. I get the ult onto the Pantheon. He gets rooted so he can't get out. Get the good slow. And now let's see if I can pick up this Kha'Zix here. And thankfully I'm able to get him. I'm barely able to get out of that alive. And that's good. But over there, that was another mistake that Kha'Zix made. Is he, re he played for the Herald. And the reason why I think that's a mistake is because, again, my Renekton is winning against this Pantheon. They have the positioning advantage. They have the gold advantage. Playing around the objective that's on the side of a losing lane is very hard, just because your Pantheon, in this case, will do so much less than my Renekton. But really quickly, just look at the enemy bot lane and the minimap. Notice what just happened. If you did not see it, the enemy bot duo just recalled. And that's really what I want to talk about in this video, and it's huge. Because by recalling at this time when the first dragon is up, what they just did was they just gave up priority for the entire lane. So now look at the positioning for my bot duo. They have the entire wave shoved in, they have control of the river. Now if something happens in the river, they'll be able to rotate first. So you can see over here, now what's going to happen? The enemy Baudu is still running back to lane and they give up the entire positioning. Before they recalled, they had the wave shoved in and they were the ones that had the positioning. But now look at this, now my teammates can rotate first and now we have good positioning for this. So the Pantheon ults in. Let's see what's going on, I'm looking for the engage. I get a good stun, plus I get the good slow for my second ability. I don't know how my ult off cooldown, but... We were still able to win this and just notice how, how much sloppier it is from them how much harder it is for them to position without the positioning advantage that they would have had if their enemy bot duo didn't recall and that's huge to understand if you're a laner watching this really understanding the jungle role it's something that i think every laner should know not only junglers and it's huge because um a big thing about a jungle that you can actually do that a lot of people don't know is if your bot duo has positioning like that if you have good warding on the dragon one of the biggest threats to, let's say in this match, if I rotated up the top lane when that first dragon is up, one of the biggest threats is that the enemy jungle is just going to rush that dragon and be able to get it. But let's say that I go for a gank in that top lane, while my bot lane has the priority, they have the full positioning advantage, they have vision set up around the river. Well then, if the enemy tries to sneak a fast run on that dragon, my bot duo can easily just rotate. So that's literally what's just happening now. My bot duo has had the positioning advantage since that reset there. And now they're able to rotate every single time. If I wanted to, I could have looked for play in the top side of the map instead. But since we already got the first turret, there's no point in going up there. But I would have done that if and over there I accidentally pressed my boots instead of my third ability. So I accidentally screwed that up, but <laughs> that probably would have landed. But that's all right. So now I have my ult off cooldown. I'm pinging my teammates. We got to group for this. They went in pretty deep for that Lux. That Lux is landing a lot of good combos this match. And that's something to really consider if you're playing an assassin like Kha'Zix this match. That's really important to just keep that in mind. So if you're not, no, oh, look at what happens here. Look at what happens here. Notice how I targeted the Varus, but it ulted the Pantheon. And I want some of y'all to, um, if you want to, you can rewind that and see why that happened. And it's actually really key. And I want you to comment down below if you figured out why that happened. Even though I locked onto the Varus, why it ulted the Pantheon. And that's actually something really useful you could do. You could use the bushes for that. Pretty much what happened was I lost sight of the Varus for like a split second. It was super small, the split second. But um, I don't know why I told you all to comment it down because I'm telling you now. But over here, I'm looking for a play. I know they're going to come back to this lane. They're probably going to have nothing up. So I really want to look for the cheese play here. Let's see if we can get them. And I don't know why they aren't coming up. I think they had warding around. That's why I started to check it. I'm like, they know I'm here probably because they're not running up here. So I ended up just coming up, and I'm taking this turret here. Oh, and actually, this is a mistake I made in the top lane. I didn't mention it, but I'm running Mastermind on Camille, meaning that every single time I assist and take in a turret or an objective, I get 120 gold. So that means just getting that one hit onto that turret will get you 120 gold. And that was a mistake I made in top lane, actually. I did not get one hit onto the turret, even though I could have. So that cost me 120 gold right there. But that's just something to keep in mind if you are going to run Mastermind. So now I'm going back to clear in my jungle. And as I was saying, with the entire positioning advantage in that bot side, I have the dragon covered. If an enemy jungler tries to sneak it really fast, my bot duo will just, will just rotate and stop him from doing that. 
and then I can look for a play in the top side. I can look for a kill. I can look for the first turret on the top side of the map if I want. So that is the one condition where I will say if my bot duo has priority, then that's the one condition that I might say I don't have to be at the dragon when it spawns. I can be on the other side of the map completely and it wouldn't matter because I probably won't lose the dragon. Because if you can get that first turret on the top side plus a kill, all while not giving up that first dragon, that is huge for your team because you get yourself so much gold. Because a really common trade-off is trading off the first turret for the dragon. But if you could do that without even losing the dragon, that's a complete game changer there. So now we're really fed. And actually I think um, the build that I'm going for this match is um, actually all the build that I go for every Camille match is um, Trinity Force into Death Stance and then Guardian Angel and Steric's Gage, and then a situational defense item, whatever defense is needed for the match. Or I can go extra damage, Blade of the Ruin King or something, if I really feel like it. So that's pretty much the build, and then for the enchantment, you can go Stasis, you can go Locket, you can go Stone Plate if you want, Gargoyle, whatever you want. But that's pretty much what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm looking to get this, um, I'm looking to make the most out of my Mastermind Rune. And over here, the Pantheon ults, and I tried to ult super quick, you can see I'm trying to jam my ult. And the reason for that is when you use your ult, you actually dodge stuff for that split second. So by ulting, you can dodge some stuff. But that Varus root lasts for such a long time. Varus is so strong right now. People don't realize it, but Varus is super strong. That root lasts forever. As you can see, I was just jamming my ult. I was literally just like, can I ult? But I was rooted the entire time, which is unfortunate. So that's the build. And then for the runes, I'm running Fleet Footwork. And the reason why you need fleet footwork, in my opinion, is because it really helps your jungle clear and makes it so you don't get super low while clearing your jungle. And what that does is it allows you to contest the scuttles and stuff. And it makes it so you aren't super low when taking the jungle. And then for my second rune, I'm running Brutal. And then for third rune, I want to talk about this third rune. The third rune, I've been running Conditioning so much lately, and I think it's such a good rune on jungle. So what it does is you pretty much get nothing early game, but then once it reaches the five minute mark, you gain eight armor and eight magic defense and then you gain an extra two every two minutes i believe it is so i think that's huge because on a jungler they're really you aren't like consistently trading the entire time you really don't fight too much in the span of five minutes so that's why i think conditioning is very good because it's not even like you lose too much value out of the early game you might lose something very small at a scuttle fight or something but i don't think it's anything substantial i think conditioning is a very good rune right now and then for the last rune i want to talk about that a bit too i've been changing it up i've mostly been going between pathfinder and and mastermind and i think in the next match i'm actually running pathfinder in the jungle so i'm really split onto those two i think mastermind of course is good rune on certain champs like camille where you're going to be taking turrets too you're going to be taking objectives but then pathfinder really just helps you rotate around faster so we're able to get the baron there and now I'm making sure that they aren't pulling a fast one and grabbing this dragon while we were on Baron. A lot of people will do that is if they know you're on Baron and that dragon is up, they'll try and sneak it in really fast. But these people didn't, so I'm taking it right now. But really on Camille, it's all about using your ult right, especially when ganking. And we're going to see that in the next match. Um, once you reach level 5, and you really should be power farming to level 5 unless you see a really good opportunity. But... um. Once you get level 5, finding the best gank is huge, and I'm really going to talk about that in the next video. This match was mostly focusing on the dragon and giving up priorities, and if you're a laner, you got to realize that recalling at the wrong times can screw over your jungle. So over here, they surrendered. So that's going to be it for this video, but or for this match. <laughs> we'll head right into the next match. Okay, we are back, and in the second match, we're again still playing some Camille in the jungle, but for this match, we're going to be focusing a lot on the ganking of Camille and choosing which lanes to gank and why and when to go. So that's the goal of this video. And I'm just placing warding down on the river. And I've been doing that a lot lately where I just place this first ward over here and then I reset and change out to sweeper. And it's been working out pretty well for me. I kind of like it. So what that ward does is if the enemy goes for that scuttle, I'll be able to see him. If anybody's rotating through that river, I'll be able to see him. And then I switch to sweeper. So then when I'm ganking, I have good warding clear so now taking this red buff doing starting off with a standard clear of course let's see but as you can see probably camille's biggest weakness is the early game the first jungle clear is a bit rough for camille it's not the fastest other junglers have way faster jungle clears 
but Camille doesn't. But if you can get past this stage of the game, if you can get to level five, then Camille is so, so strong. But over here, they're actually running a bit of an off meta pick with a Fiora in the jungle. But over here now, I'm actually looking at my lanes and I'm deciding which Scuttle do I want to play towards. And I decided to play towards this bot Scuttle because if you look at my top lane, my top lane is getting really hard shoved in. And if a fight breaks out at the top Scuttle, the Teemo is going to be able to rotate before the cannon. So I'm just like, I'll play towards this bot Scuttle instead and go for this where I think I like the odds with the Lux. Lux is super strong in these small skirmishes. So that's why I'm like, I'll play towards this lane instead. I think we have a bit of a stronger early game in this bot side. So I'm taking this, and now I'm just heading right towards this scuttle, and I see this Kha'Zix over here, and this is huge now, because my team can actually rotate first. As you can see, I'm spam pinging my teammates. I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how this is Diamond and Master Elo. I don't know where everybody is. Everybody should be rotating over here right now, but it's just me and Kha'Zix. The reason why I'm being super careful is because, again, I'm isolated versus this Kha'Zix, and I really, really gotta be careful. So, as you can see, my dragon lane starts to rotate now, but they rotated a bit too late. I get the auto attack just for the perk, actually. They get a super good um, counter over there. They actually blocked off the damage from my first ability. They get a good turn onto Katarina. But I'm able to pick that up, and now I can take the scuttle. So, honestly, everybody should have rotated earlier. What should have happened is um, my dragon lane should have rotated right away, and then the enemy Fiora should have rotated too, but none of that happened. <laughs> it, it just didn't happen. It's solo queue. Okay, so I actually already finished recording the video, but I realized I didn't get a chance to talk about this, and I think that's actually something that I really want to cover, and this is mid Fiora pick. A lot of people will say it's off meta, it's troll, etc., but I don't think it's that troll, and the reason for that is you really have to think about the strengths and weaknesses of these champs. So if you think about Katarina, Katarina, they're, one of their weaknesses is they don't really have the biggest range, they just have a bit of poke from one of their abilities, but they really don't have range, and what's Fiora's strengths? Fiora's strengths is they do really good against short range. They have really good trading. So what that means is, as you can see, the Katarina can't shove the wave at all. All they can do is poke with their ability. They can't go up and trade with an auto versus a Fiora just because that Fiora will out-trade him every time. And what that means is that the Fiora will almost always have the advantage. They're going to have the wave shoved in. They're going to have the priority. So if you're going to play the Fiora mid pick like this, it's not a bad pick, but you really have to pay, play to what you're strong at. And in this case, it's having the priority, which means that they should be able to rotate all around the map. They should be rotating on both sides of the map, looking for these scuttle fights. And that's how you scale with this mid Fiora pick here. And it's not troll at all. I'm telling you, like last match, I played against a mid Jarvan and I'm going to admit, I'm going to admit, we got kind of destroyed by it. Like our mid laner got completely destroyed. They rotated so much and it's so hard to kill him. But I really just wanted to touch up on that a bit. Just because it's off meta doesn't mean it's troll. You just really have to look at the strengths and weaknesses and how you have to play the matchup. It is what it is. But now I'm heading towards this top scuttle and I'm actually pushing this wave in for a second. Um, and, and the reason why I'm pushing these minions in is because, again, it gives my mid laner a little bit of priority at least. Now they have a bit of advantage. So if a fight does break out, if Kha'Zix does come here and contest this, then I really want my mid laner to be able to rotate first. Sometimes I'll do that a bit if I think a fight might break out somewhere. I might push in the lane a bit just so my laner has the position the positioning advantage a lot of laners will get mad at that because a lot of laners really lack the knowledge of how oh and actually the reason why i'm looking for this gank actually it's because i know fiora has nothing up and over here okay i'll talk about this in a second but um the reason why i went for that gank in the mid side is because i know the fiora already burned everything they burned their flash they burned all their summoner spells and the first fight when we killed them so what that means is they have nothing up and that's really huge because then it's so much harder for them to escape but um, a big reason why I didn't ult right away is because a very good Fiora, when you ult, if they use their counter, they can block off your ult completely if you did not know. It cancels your ultimate. So I was being very careful with my ultimate, and that's actually why I held it for a bit. But now what am I doing? I'm actually going straight to this top side, and it's for a very specific reason. Two things. One, look at the wave positioning. Wave positioning will tell you where the champs will be positioned. Because everybody, of course, will always farm up to... They will always want to farm up. So if you look at the wave, you can almost guess where the enemy champs are going to be. But I rotate up here for a single reason, and this is it. The cannon ult. That is the only reason I'm here. And that's why I didn't come to this lane earlier, because it looked like the cannon was that was kind of rough for him. They couldn't do too much. I don't think we've been able to kill him before, but I actually had this planned out before. When I was in the loading screen, I was thinking about it, because you should be thinking about that stuff in the loading screen. But ganking a cannon at level five is so so strong with camille because your ults synergize so well you trap them in with your ult and then the cannon ults and you're gonna kill almost anyone 
but the combination of that cannon having his ultimate up plus the positioning of the wave makes it so i had to go towards that like i skipped my blue buff completely i just skipped everything and i knew i was going to be able to get that kill there so now this kazakh is um going for this and again this is why having the positioning on the bot side is so so huge because that can really help you out Zipper, that Kazakh just appeared out of nowhere, actually. I, I forgot that the Kazakh... I lost track of the Kazakh's ult. I didn't see he was over there. So when I pick up the Honey Fruit, I'm waiting for my cooldowns to get back. Waiting for my second ability and my first ability. I'm taking the Scuttle. Looks like my team's good. We got a good Katarina rotate. So... We got that. And now, let's see, do I push this midwave in? Yes, I actually do. And the reason for that is Fiora is on bot side, and I'm looking to push this mid turret here. Camille is a very good split pusher too. That's one thing about Camille is it's probably the most well-rounded jungler. So now I'm trying to take this turret here. Let's see if I can get it. Their ADC actually rotates. So their ADC just left their bot side and just chose to defend the mid turret, which is an all right decision. Better to lose a bot turret than a mid turret. But I always want to rotate to this cannon whenever he has ult and I'm always checking his ult cooldown. And that's why I head up here right away, actually. I know he had his ult off cooldown and I really, really want to force fights from that cannon has ult. Because cannon ult is huge in these small skirmishes. Because that stun is just so strong and has so much burst damage. So now I'm able to take this herald here. And that was really good. And I'm checking the cooldown of the ultimate of the cannon. That's why I'm opening up the scoreboard so much. And I'm looking at the circle above the um the circle above the champ picture. So if you didn't know, a lot of people don't know this, but if you look above your mini-map, um over here I'm looking for a cheese play on this. Um I don't know why they worded it up. They probably knew I was there or something somehow. Because I, I don't know who words that, but some they probably had a word somewhere around and saw me walk there and then worded that. That was just unfortunate, but um if you didn't know, if you look right next to the minimap, you have the you have the champ pictures right to the right of the minimap. And if you look at the green circle above the champ pictures, that means they have their ult up or they don't have their ult up if it's not green. So right now Lux and Jin have their ult up, Kennen and Katarina don't. And then if you can, if you open up the scoreboard, you can see the green circle next to their pictures again, and that shows you how far off cooldown their ult is. So you can see it's halfway off cooldown and etc. So that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm checking the scoreboard. I want to see how much longer that cooldown is for Kennen. So now I start to head down on this side. Looking for this gank. And again, the reason why I actually head down onto this side is the wave positioning. The wave positioning is why I head down here. Because if you look at the wave positioning, it's pushed all the way into our turret. So what that means is the enemy champ is going to be overextended to farm that up. Meaning that's a good gank for me and for a jungler. And also, I wanted this first turret here because that first turret was super low. So that was good there. So we pick up those kills now. See the Kazakhs here? Oh, I was actually pinging that the Kazakhs was down here if you were paying attention a bit earlier. I was, pinging, I was spam pinging this. And the reason why I knew Kazakhs was on this side of the map was because Kazakhs had just cleared his red side. If you remember when he killed me on that top side over there when I was in that bush... He was clearing his red side jungle. So what that means is after he clears his red side, what's he going to do? He's not going for a gank or anything. So he's going to go to his blue side jungle to clear that. So I knew he was going to be on that side of the map. And that's why I was being a bit careful and why I was pinging my teammates. Over here, now we get that top trade. I'm resetting. I have so much gold. I've had so much gold this entire match. Like, I think I actually got like my entire Trinity Force after first buy, maybe. I think. I don't remember. But now again, I'm checking the cooldowns of my teammates. Let's see. And what do I do here? I think I head towards top side again. Let's see. I didn't see the Ken Nolt cooldown, but I think I'm heading there. Yep. I am heading there. And it's probably because the Ken Nolt is almost off cooldown when I checked it. I can't see right now how much it's off cooldown, but... Okay, it's 20 seconds, actually. So, I started to head up on this side of the map. And now I'm looking for this fight here. But it's really key, actually, to keep, make sure that our teammates don't get isolated versus the Kazakhs. That's the only way the Kazakhs is strong. We actually didn't even need the cannon ult. I was honestly just going to hang around and fight around a bit in the jungle. And then once that cannon ult got back off cooldown, then I was going to force something. But didn't even need to. But um, when you're playing against the Kazakhs, a really good way to help your teammates is making sure that they don't get isolated. So if you don't know, when you get isolated by Kazakhs, his damage increases by like almost twice as much. So that's when Kazakhs is super strong against isolated targets. And as you can see, I almost very rarely fight this Kazakhs in a 1v1. I always make sure that I have teammates around. And look, this is why I play around this cannon when he has ult. The, ult. the ult is just so strong. And playing around the right lanes at the right time is so huge. And guaranteeing um, getting your kills and stuff. Just increasing the odds that you're going to get the kill is so, so important. And paying attention to big ults is huge. And honestly, this Kaisa caught me off guard being here. I tried to just auto him to get the... Um, 
per barrier from a perk. I get the healing from my second ability, but I, I don't know what... Oh, the death stance, the death stance. Okay. Yeah, I got killed there, sadly. That was a bit unfortunate. But um, if you're super low, actually, and you think you might have your perk off cooldown, landing an auto attack onto the enemy, it'll give you the barrier. So you could do that in a case like that instead of just trying to run where you don't get the barrier. You're getting at least one auto attack. So now that dragon spawning, I'm saying we should start to group around it. But really, the things to consider, the big ultimates that your teammates have when ganking, this is what I'm talking about, things to consider. The big ultimates, both your teammates and your enemies, and if they're off cooldown or on cooldown. And then the wave positioning, the wave positioning, because that will almost always tell you where the enemy champs will be positioned and whether they'll be overextended or not. And then, of course, the health bars, if they're super low, if they're full health. So, for example, getting a full health Garen, probably not the move. Sometimes it'll work, but it has to be like perfect, ideal situation. So for now, I'm keeping an eye on this Kha'Zix. They surrender here, actually. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you all are enjoying, make sure to like and subscribe. And that's going to be it. And I'll see you all in the next video.